Today we're going to be looking at another shawl. This one's called the Lotus Blossom Shawl. my channel and hi to my new subscribers I've gained a few since the giveaway started so welcome thank you for joining me and I hope you'll stay with me um so today um just looking at another shawl um you should probably guess I'm having a bit of a shawl kick at the minute uh, this one is a crocheted shawl um and it is called the lotus blossom shawl it's by Tamara Kelly um she's the lady the lady does the Mowgli blog um I'm sure many of you um, so there's the name there, Lotus Lotus Blossom Shawl. This is just the front page, I'm not giving anything away particularly. Um, and that's her blog. Um, I follow her on Facebook, um, which is where I stumbled across the pattern. Um, but I'll put the links uh, for the pattern down um, in the description box. It is a free pattern. Um, so, the um, this shawl is actually designed um, to go over your shoulders um, a lot of shawls I'm sure you all know they tend to sit across your shoulders rather than actually come up and over and I, I thought that would actually be really good um, I've actually made this for um, a refugee to go towards the refugee project uh, run by the Woolly Hugs charity um, I'll put the link for Woolly Hugs um, in the description as well for those of you that aren't aware of it um, it's a charity I do a lot of um, stuff for um, I just like giving back so um, so there's only so many things you can make for yourself and loved ones and yeah a lot of people don't want crocheted stuff so I'm doing it for people that I know are in genuine need so um, yeah this pattern um, it's uh, written in uh, USA terminology so for those of you in England you'll need to bear that in mind it doesn't faze me as I tend to work in US terminology more anyway but I can can translate between the two fairly easily um, the yarn it calls for is the Lime Brand Shawl in a Ball, uh, which is a worsted weight um, or a 10 ply in the UK. Um, I didn't use that because, quite frankly, I can never afford to buy um, the yarns it specifies, so I always use something different. I don't bother doing gauge swatches because of that, because it's completely pointless, really. Um, yeah, anyway, I looked at the colours of that one um, and I was thinking, oh. Actually, I've got some similar colours that Carol, which is Kazi No No on um, Instagram. I will link that down in the description as well. Um, she sent me some lovely yarns, and um, I'm quite jealous of everyone that's got these Karen cakes and Woolcraft cakes and oh, all the different brands and stuff. I just can't afford that, quite frankly. Um, it's not yarn snobbery, or I'm not knocking anyone that's got it. I just can't afford to do it. So um, I decided to kind of make my own like you do so this is uh, how it's turned out as you can see it's quite a large shawl um, she actually describes it in the pattern I can't really fit this on camera because I can't get any further back but it looks a bit like a Pac-Man kind of shape um, so it give you a rough idea um, so um, yeah that's the so I mean it's literally as wide as my span will go my arm span so um, but I think it's come out really pretty actually I'm really really pleased with it um, so predominantly the pattern is used um, using double crochets in US terms and that's treble crochets in UK terms um, if you've got a basic understanding of crochet it's fairly easy I wouldn't say it was a beginner project but certainly if you're just passing beginner you could potentially do it um, it's kind of made in segments and then um, as you get towards the bottom of the pattern, um, it does start with a magic loop, I think, or magic ring, or whatever you want to call it. Let me just double check. I'm pretty sure it's so long ago since I started it now. Uh, la, la, la. Yeah, magic circle it starts with. So those of you who aren't keen on that, just be warned. Of course, there are other ways around it. Um, yeah, and then you just work backwards and forwards in sort of a similar manner to a virus shawl, really. Just obviously different stitches. Um, there's basic increases, so in place of there's two stitches in one stitch. Nothing particularly difficult about that. Um, and it goes all the way along like that until you get to basically this point here. Where my finger is, right, and my thumb is there, right. That hole is meant to be there, just for the record. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, and then when you get to this point, and then each segment, between each segment, it's just to make it a bit wider, and it, I think it makes it quite pretty, actually. It's just basically um, double crochets, US turns, trebles in the UK, and chain ones, and then the next row will either work into the chain one space with the uh, double crochets going in, or into the stitches themselves. They alternated rows with that. Um, so it's actually quite simple, but I think it looks quite pretty. And as you can see, it's in each segment oh, I can't see what I'm doing on camera when I've got it in front of my face but hopefully you can see um, it's in every segment so it kind of makes it just makes it a little bit more interesting um, so the yarn that I used I mean it was you know how to double crochet US terms travels in the UK um, if you know how to do that and you know how to chain one and you know how to do a basic increase by doing two stitches in one stitch it's an easy pattern um, I found it easy to follow, it was well written so I can't complain. Um, so for this pattern I used what they actually said to use um, which was a 6.5mm hook. Um, so the yarns I've used were ones that uh, Carol, uh, which is Kazi Nunu on Instagram, um, gave me. Um, so I kind of made it into my own version of Karen Cake because it's as near as I'm ever going to get. So the um, I started with the blue, so the blue was, and those of you that have uh, seen Carol, the video of uh, the yarn haul from Carol would have seen this before. I've used about three quarters of this ball, um, and it's James C. Brett top value, double knitting, it's 100% acrylic, and um, it doesn't tell you yardage or anything, so that's the yarn there, so you can see it's quite floppy. I've used about... Yeah, about three quarters of it. Shade colour is 8419. Okay, and then I did um, the pink. Um, I basically alternated, as you can see, I alternated the colours um, with each row. So I did pink next, um, which is exactly the same yarn. James C. Brett, Brett, blah, James C. Brett Top Value. Shade is 848. And again, I've used about three quarters of the ball of that. Not quite as much as the blue. Um, I did slightly more on the blue than I did any of the other colours. Um, then after the pink, I did the lilac, which is a Signet yarn, Signet double knit. Um, all these yarns are 100% acrylic, I should say, just in case I forget to say that. Um, shade colour is 233 and it's lilac. Doesn't want to focus. Oh, that one doesn't want to focus, but you've taken my word for it. 233 three, Lilac. Apologise if you can hear that ribbon outside. There's a motorbike outside somewhere. It's very loud. Um, and I don't think this has the yardage either. No. Nope. Oh, no, it does. 298 metres. There we go. And I've used about three quarters of that as well. As you can see, it's quite a bit of that gone. And then the final colour, which was the purple, um, I used the King Cole uh, Baby Big Value DK. I quite like the label on that, it's very cute. Uh, the shade is 296, it is called Majestic. There we go. Um, and it's approximately 320 yards or 290 meters um, and I would say I've used well over three quarters of that that's you know really isn't a lot left um, I need to cake all these up I sent to pull my balls of yarn so that's why they're not caked um, they've all worked out brilliantly it feels really soft um, so what I've done is color wise I've done three rows in each colour so I've done three rows of the blue the pink lilac purple and so three rows three rows three rows three rows three rows three basically until I got there um, and then um, I don't know if you remember I mentioned in my last video I uh, basically I <laughs> because of the way the pattern printed I'm gonna do this from a distance so you can't really read it but as you can see the bottom half of the page is blank there so I thought I'd finished and I went um, I had the page on the top like that and then did that and of course there's a photograph and three more rows to the pattern there so <laughs> uh, 
um, so it wasn't quite the end of the pattern. So when I thought I was going to show it over the weekend, uh, yeah, didn't work out. So I had to add three more rows. Um, and I didn't want to end on the pale pink. I just didn't feel that was going to set it off. Um, so I had to do two rows and basically a border is what the last three uh, parts of the pattern were. So I just uh, repeated the uh, pink, one row of pink, one of the lilac, and then I did the purple border all the way around. The border was all done um, in single crochets. Um, that's uh, double crochet. That's US terms, double crochet in U UK terms. Um, up the sides, or up the Pac-Man section, um, as she called it, um, you did two single crochets in the corner there. Again, double crochets in the UK. And then you do single crochet, chain one. In, um, so you do single crochet into the end of each row, chain one, single crochet into the next row, and so on, all the way up. Um, the, basically, what well, is the top of the shawl that goes over your shoulders. Um, the rest of it was all just single crochet, crochet in each stitch and basically two single crochets in each corner. Um, and that's it. Single crochet is US term, double crochet in UK terms, in case I'm confusing anybody. Um, and I'm absolutely in love with this and I really don't want to give it away, but I'm going to have to. Um, I really, really enjoyed making this. It was a nice, easy pattern. It was nice. You could sit and watch TV. There is a little bit of counting, but it's not too bad. You get kind of a gist where your final stitch is going to go after you've done a few rows. So um, I don't I haven't even checked if I'm putting this the right way around. But um, as you can see, it, it comes right down over. So um, I've still got my arms free. So, if, you know, those of you that do crochet and perhaps your arms get a bit chilly, you still get the movement. Um, but I think it looks really pretty, actually. Um, and it comes it comes right down um, just below my waistband. So just at, sort of near the top of my bum. <laughs> um, but I thought this would be really good for somebody that you know perhaps it's really cold it will keep them warm and uh, yeah and I really love it it's, I seem to be making a lot of things I want to keep at the minute which is really bad isn't it um, but I may make one for myself at some point obviously it'll be used in different yarn um, because uh, Carol obviously gave this for me uh, to do charity work so this will be going to charity it's going to go in my charity pile I will add this has not been blocked yet um, so it's not perfectly uh, straight along the edges for that reason. Um, yeah, um, so that's it. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I have no idea what the next video is going to be. I've got so many things I've started. Um, I'm working on a butterfly, I'm working on a frog, um, but they both seem to be taking forever. Then I ran out of stuffing and I had to order some more, which has finally got delivered yesterday. Um, although the package was cut open, um, so I wasn't too impressed with that, but fortunately the bags inside weren't damaged, so, yeah, uh, I don't know what else is going to be coming up next, I really don't, um, I'm going to frantically try and get something finished to show you, that's the only trouble with doing two videos a week, is, uh, trying to get stuff to show, so it may end up being a work in progress the next one if I don't get anything finished, but we shall see how we go, um, yeah. Uh, so that's it. How are you all today? Um, I hope you're all well. Um, what are you working on? Because um, I do like hearing about that. Thank you to everyone that's uh, joined the giveaway. I've seen quite a few names that I haven't seen before. So that's been quite nice because I'm actually starting to get to know some of you that have been anonymous. So, <laughs> um, yeah. One thing I was going to ask you guys. Do any of you know of any good tutorials on how to use Ravelry? Um, I've got the basics, I know how to put projects and stuff on there, but I, you know, things like creating groups or how to use the library and all things, I'm still really learning, I'm not very proficient with Ravelry, I really do struggle um, how to use it, so if any of you know of any good tutorials, please let me know, um, that would be really useful because it's something I want to kind of make more use of, and particularly any tutorials that, that use the um, Stash and Go app, because um, I don't put my laptop on very often so I tend to use the app more although the free version isn't that great so um, I'd love to know what you think and what your experiences are and any sort of help you could give me I'd be really appreciative um, yeah and of course let me know what projects you're doing and don't forget you can always upload anything you're working on or have completed or even some hauls if you've got them 
um, up onto my Facebook group and there's a nice little community there, lots of people have been putting things up and it's been really lovely seeing everything everybody's working on so um, please do come across and join us. So that's it, um, so remember until next time to stay well, happy crafting and until next time remember to stay true to yourself. Bye.